stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America. Amen. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Good morning. It is great to be in worship with you. We thank you for joining us with the Driftless Regional Ministries Worship Service. I am Pastor Pam Harkema. I serve the Liberty Pole New Hope and Retreat Church, and we are here at the Retreat United Methodist Church. And we welcome you and, and are so glad that you've taken time to be with us. I ask that you would turn to or go to the website, the driftlessministries.org website, and download the bulletin for um, for today's worship, so you can follow along. It has all the words to our songs as well as the the reading for us today, so you can follow along with worship that way. Um, a, a few announcements: uh, we have been working on gathering uh, materials for hygiene kits. Our United Methodist Committee on Relief has distributed over 3,000 hygiene kits to people in Wisconsin who are in need. And these are kits that consist of things like a bar of soap and toothpaste and a toothbrush and, and um, a towel and just very simple, basic needs. And we have gathered quite a few so far and um, we've extended the, the day that you have to, to provide your supplies if you are anxious to do that or wanting to do that. Barb Robson will be collecting those and putting them into the kit format and you can bring one item or you can bring a whole kit or you can bring several items, it, it, whatever you can contribute. And the list was sent in an email and we'll be sure that that is listed on the website as well. So um, we'd like to have those by this coming Wednesday to, to Barb Robson or you can bring them to me at the Parsonage. So um, if any questions, just give a call. Next Sunday is Pentecost, and if you are in worship, you have worshipped on Pentecost before, you know that we always wear red. So I'm going to encourage you, wherever you are, put on your red pajamas, put on your red sweatshirt, and wear red to worship the Lord on Pentecost next Sunday. With that said, um, we are going to continue to honor the wisdom of our bishop and uh, delay our opening of church until the 21st of June. And again, this is a situation where we will, we will evaluate from week to week. Our primary concern has always been the safety and health of people. And while I know that we all miss worshiping together, we want to first keep people safe. John Wesley's first rule was do no harm and to do good and to do those two, two things we really cannot place people in harm's way when we come back there will be protocols for us to follow and we're still putting those together we want to make sure all of the sanctuaries are sanitized properly and that we have procedures in place to keep people safe and healthy so for now we are holding off until june 21st and i appreciate your prayers in this manner so um, I thank you, thanks to Tom Baker, to Jeff Nelson, and to Charlie Groves, uh, our worship team this morning. And we begin our worship with Charlie leading us in the uh, gathering of the collective. So if you have your bulletins and can read along with her. 
with me? God is good. All, All the, the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is good. And the centering of our thoughts for today, on this, on this Ascension, Ascension Sunday, we celebrate Christ's return, return to God. God. But this is not a time to gaze upward. Jesus has entrusted us with his ministry of love. Prepare for what is ahead with prayer and praise. And now if you'll join on with our hymn, Holy Ground. We are standing birthdays this week and anniversaries are Stacy and Jeff Matson. We congratulate you all on these events, these uh, these days in our lives that bring us together in um, and mark the times that were so significant for us. So congratulations to you all. I invite you to pray for especially the Thu family this week. Um, Jana's father Jim is not doing well and has is in hospice care now and um, they are with him this week they were going to play for us today but we're going to have them play another time and we we send our love and our thoughts and prayers with them as they are with jim at this time um, no other new um, prayer concerns that i'm aware of it was wonderful to see bev kaylee a couple of weeks ago at the mother's day she is continuing to do well Gloria Warmuth is continuing to improve and will be starting her treatments. Um, the, the start date was just a little bit delayed, but she is doing fantastic right now. So, and um, our, our dear Marla Withy completed her radiation treatments and rang the bell and, was in, and had a, a very successful appointment with her doctor who said that her, um, her um, large enlargements had, had really, um, it wasn't, I'm not even sure, but it, it's it's better. It's all better. That's the main thing that we need to remember. So uh, praise God for His healing in the lives of our congregation and for His healing in 
in our community. We are blessed right here in DeSoto that we have not had cases of the COVID virus and we are continuing to pray that we will be protected in this area and that we can protect each other by adhering to the, the policies of, of wearing a mask and social distancing and, and doing the things that respect each other. So, with these things on our mind then, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord of us all, we come to you with great hum humility. We are not worthy so much as to even come before you with our petitions and our, our requests, but Lord, you invite us. You have made a way for us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we know you love us, and you welcome us. And so today, Lord, we bring to you our gift of praise, our gift of thanksgiving, that you have kept us safe, and that even in times of trial and trouble, you keep us safe. Today, Lord, I, I ask you to be with the people of Midland, Michigan. As, as dams collapse and waters flood and wipe out cities and portions of cities. As people flee their homes. And now the mess that is left to clean up. We praise you, Lord, that there were no lives lost in this disaster. It's only things. And, and things, Lord, we know you provide for our needs. God, today we lift the Thu family. We lift Jana and her father, Jim, Jim Hamilton, as he is preparing for his journey home to you. For all of those who are ill, we lay their lives before you, Lord, and ask your holy blessing on them. For your healing as you have healed Marla and Bev and Gloria, Lord, as you continue to work in their lives. And God, we ask especially today that you would give us patience. That you would allow us to listen for your wisdom. Listen for your word to guide us in the decisions that we make. We have a responsibility to each other, Lord, that you have given to us to keep each other safe, to protect each other, to especially help those who are less fortunate than we, to care for the sick, feed the hungry, to keep situations safe so that we can be safe together. Lord, in our quest to do no harm, we will continue to worship you in non-traditional ways, to keep the church alive in our hearts. And through the mercy of your Lord and Savior, your Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray to you the words that he taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever. Amen. And on this Ascension Sunday, or we will um, join now in the hymn, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking up, looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
Today offers us several paths for a worship focus. It is the last Sunday of the Easter season, but it's also a number of other things. In the United Methodist Church, this past Thursday was Aldersgate Day, which marks the day our founder, John Wesley, in 1738, received a revelation of the Spirit, which shifted his thinking and began what would become our Methodist, Methodist denomination. Sometimes we say this is Heritage Sunday in the United Methodist Church. Today, of course, is also the, the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend in our American culture, a day in which we honor those who have died in military service to our country. Usually we have a parade and tributes at cemeteries. Flags are placed on graves and poppies are offered as a tribute, as a symbol of blood shed. In recent years, we have also given tribute to those who have been important to, in, to us in our lives on Memorial Day. This weekend also serves as the unofficial start of summer with the opening of vacation cabins and boating and picnics and campfires and multi-day mattress sales. But in the liturgical calendar, this is Ascension Sunday. It is the time 40 days after Jesus' resurrection that Christ returned to heaven to begin a time of working from home. We mark this specifically in the creed of our faith, the Apostles' Creed. It's our statement of what we believe as United Methodists and as Christians of all denominations. And I would like for us to say that creed together now. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Creed has three sections that affirm our triune belief. We believe in Creator God. We believe in Jesus Christ with lines describing the events of his life. And we believe in the Spirit and a list of other things that we affirm. You know, we don't normally think that much about Ascension Sunday, but consider that this single event and the things that happen because of this event, this gets more attention than any other aspect of our creed of beliefs. He ascended into heaven after, after he was born, tried, executed, buried, resurrected. Then comes this last earthly event, returning to heaven. And he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He returns to heaven for a specific place of honor. And from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. He's, he's called to do a specific task. Three lines of our creed are included because of the ascension. It's one of those days of the liturgical year that I think is on par with Christmas and Easter and Pentecost, but we really don't give it a lot of attention. Even the Bible doesn't give a lot of space to this in the text. There's the reading in Acts, which Charlie read today. There's the complimenting telling in the, the, in, um, the end of Luke with a mention in Mark. But overall, the ascension doesn't appear to be that important to Jesus' ministry. And yet, there are some remarkable lessons here. I want to focus on one part today. The stunned disciples staring into heaven and not wanting to move from the holy ground where they were standing. They're coming to the realization that Jesus is not going to be with them in person anymore. I have shared that same kind of response every time I join a family member at a graveside service. There is tremendous reluctance to leave because leaving means that life is officially different. Someone 
we care about and love is gone. We want to stay there, frozen in a moment where life and death, where past and present, present and future, where none of that makes any difference. Just stay there in the presence and spirit of a person that we logically know we will never see on earth again. We are honoring their life that way. We think back to how their influence formed us and shaped us. So it is for this singular moment that the Methodist Heritage Sunday, Memorial Day, and Ascension Sunday all overlap because essentially they represent the same kind of thinking, remembering where we came from. Our United Methodist Church traces back to this single moment in the life of John Wesley. It was a, a moment of spiritual transformation. He left for a, he, he was at a typical evening service and his heart was strangely warmed. And he left that service with a completely different way of thinking about the Holy Spirit and his relationship with Christ. And that formed how he would preach and teach and lead and how we would eventually have our, our denomination. You might recall these words from his journal. In the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society at Aldersgate Street where one was reading Martin Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation. And assurance was given to me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Okay, there is nothing unusual about Wesley real, what Wesley realized that day. It was information he already knew. John Wesley knew his sins were forgiven and he was loved by Christ. But on that day, John felt that knowledge differently. His salvation took on a new meaning that words could not articulate. It was a heartwarming, emotional experience that could only be felt. So, our denominational heritage gives us that first thread of our worship today. Second, usually on Memorial Day, I am honored to be involved in some kind of ceremony which takes place at a cemetery or, or a church. There's a distinguished uniformed color guard that presents the flag. A trumpeter plays taps. Sometimes there are marching bands that attend. We remember the lives of those who served in the military and we remember, we remember that all that we learn and are and can be because someone else cleared a path for us or showed us the way. Of course, there will be no public tributes this year. But as we recall, the, not only the soldiers who sacrificed for ideals like freedom and democracy and human rights, we also dwell on those we are no longer able to see. Our parents, our siblings, our loved ones, our mentors and friends who guided us. And in our own private world, we are moved in our hearts, strangely warmed, perhaps, as we recall their influence. So our national pride and our personal history of ancestry and human relationships, that gives us the second thread for our worship. And that brings us to the ascension, the final act of Christ, the earthly act of Christ. And in that moment, as Charlie read, the disciples stand looking, frozen in their emotions, yet warmed in their hearts, filled with the memories of the last three years and how they are changed and different people because they knew and worshiped with Jesus Christ. We understand their wanting and their need to pause and take note of what was certainly a time of fatigue, perhaps emotional emptiness, tears pouring out in sorrow. And then in the next breath, the hollow void fills with hope that Christ will indeed return. 
knowing in the depths of their soul the truth of the angel's words, Christ will return. Faith and hope gives us the third thread of our reflections today. But the thing that weaves all of these things together is what happens afterwards. Because none of these stories end with these events. The story continues. John Wesley used the fire in his soul to motivate him to spread the gospel in a new way. To preach on the corners and in the fields. To take ministry to the people. Honestly, I think today John Wesley would be ecstatic that the church did not let a little thing like a global pandemic stop the worship of Christ and the sharing of the good news. He would be thrilled that people are embracing worship in new ways. And then there are all the lessons that we learn from those who are no longer with us. We have a responsibility to live and teach those lessons just as they were taught to us. We have a responsibility to defend the downtrodden and to uphold Christian values, to care for each other just as the soldier who fought for us and the ancestors who lived their example for us. But of course, our greatest lessons come to us from Jesus Christ. The apostles didn't just stand there oogling the sky until they died. They went back to Jerusalem. They reflected and listened to the voice of the Lord. They worshiped. They launched into new forms and ways of ministry. They put their faith into action. They had small group meetings on Zoom. Okay, well, maybe they didn't have small group meetings on Zoom, but if they had that technology, you can bet that they would have. The apostles knew that Christ had overcome death. They knew Jesus lived. They didn't need concrete signs saying Jesus will return because for the disciples, Christ truly never left. They were convinced of Christ's continued presence. And because Christ remained with them and remains with us, we know Christ is not finished. Ministry continues. We continue to immerse ourselves in prayer and we continue to walk with Jesus. For the apostles, the ascension was only the beginning of the next phase of their adventure with Christ. They drew strength from their connection with each other. The last three years with Jesus was only a hint at the bond that would be forged in the Holy Spirit. They felt the need to replace Judas, to choose another to occupy his place, and so the core of the church to come was being formed. And finally, these apostles were willing to wait. We're not really a waiting society, are we? We have emphasized busyness and activity, but the scriptures tell us over and over that waiting is when we most clearly understand who we are and what God can do with us. Waiting time is not wasted time. Jesus waited 30 years before beginning his ministry. The disciples also allowed a time of waiting for God to get them ready for what was to come. See, I am certain that these last months have been our necessary waiting time. God uses this time to direct us, to draw from our past inspiration, from our denomination, from the nurturing and traditions of our families, even to immerse ourselves in the painful and illuminating lessons of our history. Especially, God draws us to meditate on where we are, our place in our faith journey. We're not going to be in this waiting time or in this situation forever. So, let's turn our eyes to look forward. Not to dwell on the places or the, the systems or the processes that we used to have and where we used to focus our faith. 
And let's use these waiting days to consider how we are going to journey forward with Christ from here. We are a blessed people. Amen. Today we are going to close our worship with the song America. It's number 697 in our hymnal. Tom? together. As Christ taught us, so should we teach. As Christ loves us, so should we love. As Christ served us, so should we also serve others. We leave to teach, to love, to serve the Lord. Amen. And I pray that you will find blessing in the drawing from our personal history, from our denominational history, and from especially our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, from the, the lessons of Ascension Sunday. So may you draw from our past to create a new future in ministry, and may God be with you till we meet again. Mm -hmm.